Welcome to the video that I will probably regret and cringe at in six months. My family has finally left the house and I can finally record this. This is great. I know I'm gonna have to get used to like recording when people are in the house and just get used to it but uh let's just do it my name is rachel this is my new channel uh let me in the library that's the name of my channel i didn't just forget it and this is the booktube newbie tag so the very first question is why did you start this channel here's the real reason we're in quarantine we're in social isolation and um i need to do this this is kind of the time where people like myself who are privileged enough to just be able to stay home and not have to go out and work out there and can work from home now have probably a little bit more free time on their hands. I don't have as long of a commute, I have fewer social engagements, and so I recently discovered booktube and I was like, holy shit, this is literally perfect. This is fantastic, okay? All I do is talk about books and people are like, I haven't read that, I don't know what you're talking about, can you go clean your room now? So I figured if I discovered this community and it's so cool, everyone is just like, just make a booktube, so I'm doing it. I'm really excited to do it and now that I have like a bit more free time on my hands, I kind of think I can start making some videos and talking about books and just being excited. So, um, thanks for watching me. That's really cool of you. Question two is, what are some fun and unique things that you can bring to booktube? I probably won't be doing anything that no one's ever done before. I think that's really hard nowadays. There are very few original ideas that no one has ever done, but I think there is a cool way that you can do something other people have done and just put your own creative spin on it, and I'm hoping I could do something like that. Uh, I'm just excited to like make videos and stuff, so even if they're the same exact thing you've seen from other people, I'm hoping that you will still be willing to check me out, you know, check me out, you know, uh, see what I'm up to, and, you know, it, it'll just be a fun- did it say fun? Yeah, it's a fun. I'll be fun. I promise I'll be fun for you to watch. Number three! What are you most excited for about this new channel? Okay, we've been through this. I love books. I'm really excited to just talk about books that I've read and also probably rant about a couple books that I read and I did not like. Oh, I think it's gonna be great. I think this is actually a really good opportunity to read books more deeply because I do tend to kind of just speed through books if it's like an audiobook and I'm listening to it, then I just... Let's hurry up, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh my god, you can see my laundry in the background. I'm just gonna shift myself over right now. Oh, dear. you know what? I'm not in a great room right now. This is just where all the natural lighting in my house is. I'm gonna just jazz hands it for a bit. What was the question again? I literally forgot what I was saying. Was I saying? I'm excited to talk about books. That's pretty much it. I'm just excited to like meet people that are, you know, have similar interests to me or like totally different interests and just learn from each other. I feel like this is sort of like an interview. Like you're getting to know me and I'm existing in the void. And we're in the void together, you know? Like, we're just voiding it out together. This is the time to meet people and to just discover different things about each other and... What am I saying? I don't know. What is next? What do you love about reading? I don't really think of reading as escapism because I'm not really trying to get away from anything, but I think it's like exploration. You get to explore what it really is like to be in that world and to be that character. What sort of things that they go through, whether it's positive or negative, you gain empathy for those situations and for those people. So I think it's actually very important to not just read a specific genre or a specific, um, I guess, like archetype, but to really expand that. Am I saying that I need more empathy? Maybe. I think uh, sometimes I treat it probably incorrectly because I spend too much time saying like I need to read this many pages or need to read like 12 books a month or something like that which isn't necessary so part of that is the fun part even though it probably shouldn't be but reading itself is just very cathartic and it's exploration it's you you get to really live someone else's life I don't think there's a single person that can say that they've had every experience there is out there but you sort of get to experience things by reading about them. And that's why I think it's so important to read if you have the chance. What is next? What book or series got you into reading? Uh, this is an easy one. A series of unfortunate events by Lemony Snicket, aka Daniel Handler. I love him. I met him once and I almost died. We were all like, what's in the sugar bowl? And he's like, I'm not taking questions at this time. It was fantastic. A series of unfortunate events, if you don't know, is a series of, technically, I think they're like middle grade books 
about three orphans who are passed from guardian to guardian after their parents are mysteriously killed in an accident. And this evil guy named Count Olaf is following them around from place to place because he's trying to steal their fortune. And he, like, does not care about them at all. He's pretty much no morals. All he wants is that money, which is, like, he's just trying to get this bread. But, like, he's also trying to, like, kill those orphans, which is not good. So, yeah, it's the three siblings. The eldest is very good at inventing. The second is the biggest bookworm ever. And the third likes to bite, but not in a kinky way. She's three. What's really cool about it is, as you're following these children, you learn through their eyes that sometimes you can't trust adults. The good guys don't always win. You have to rely on yourself. You have to use your smarts. Use what you've got and get yourself out of this situation. That was really unique. I never really read a series like that when I was around that age that encouraged me to read a lot, to try things that wasn't just like a corny, like, you can do anything. Like, it was actually engaging. And there were a lot of life lessons in there that I don't think that you get from probably most of the other series that I've read. It's a really fun series as well. I'm just gonna get a book and I'll show you. Okay, here's a funny thing. The youngest of the group is Sunny. She will just say kind of like nonsense three-year-old words, stuff that babies would say. So she'll say, there is, which means something like, we'll need money to make a phone call. And her siblings will just understand what she means, which is like, I know that's not like the most original thing, but it's just really funny the way that they do it. It's a very fun series, not for the murder, but for the ingenuity of the kids. They're very smart. like. Sometimes they end up in like the most dangerous situation where you would go like, I would have no idea how to get out of this. And I think this series kind of like almost taught me like, if you're in this situation, here's what to do to get out of it, which is not something I'd probably find myself in, but it's kind of like where you were like a kid and you just kept seeing like quicksand on TV and you're like, this is obviously going to be a problem for me in the future. I'm obviously going to get stuck in quicksand. Like I got to be ready just in case you never know because you don't know. On the back, he'll always have this note that's like, please don't read this book. You should really just go read something happier, which is really funny because Read With Cindy always ends her booktube videos with please unsubscribe from me and subscribe to this other person instead. So this is sort of like the author equivalent of that. I feel like I got shorter since the beginning of this video. Should I get back up? I'm on my knees. And the other thing is like none of the adults will believe any of the kids, even though they're like, hey, we've literally gotten like almost murdered 12 times. And everyone's like, I mean... But he seems like such a nice guy. So then it makes you just be like, I don't trust adults. I only trust children, obviously. Okay, I finally found one. All right, eavesdropping, a word which here means listening in on interesting conversations you were not invited to join. He will do this, but he'll also put it in the context of the actual story. So he's not just giving you like the Oxford Dictionary definition of a word, but he's contextualizing it in a really funny way. So it'll be more so about how the characters are feeling. It's a very unique way of writing. I really recommend it if you've never read this series to pick it up because it's not just something that you can just read to kids. And a lot of people, I think, don't really want to read like middle grade, even if you feel that way. And that's kind of a separate conversation. This series is not just for middle grade. This is not like other girls. This series is meant for everybody. As soon as you can read and understand object permanence, I feel like you should just read this series. How about this not get you into reading? Literally, like, kind of the moral of this story in every book, even though there are so many, a big one is to, like, just read. Keep reading. It's so good. What questions would you ask your favorite booktubers? So, I've only really discovered booktube about a month ago, and I kind of love everybody. What I would ask is, how do you have time to read all the books, record all the videos, edit all the videos, do all that you know, the reading vlogs, like the everything, the interaction and stuff, and still have a life. It seems so stressful. I feel like you're not self-caring. I'm just wondering, like, how do you balance all that stuff and still have time for, like, your job? Here's another question for a lot of the uh, booktubers out there. How do you find your next read? Is there a way that you pick your next TBR that you think is like, ooh, this is the one I gotta get to? For me, it's just sort of like a gut feeling of like, oh, this sounds so cool, I'm gonna read this right now. But I also read like 12 books at the same time, which is rough. I think this is the last question. Okay, what challenges do you think starting a booktube channel will be the hardest to overcome? I have to schedule in the time to like edit this stuff and get it in and... I think it's just going to be like adjusting to that general schedule of doing that stuff. But uh, I'm just, I'm excited about it. I can't wait to like read with you. It's going to be so good. I hope you're well. I hope you're washing your hands. I hope you're using Aquaphor on your washed hands because they're, you know, they get dry, crackly. Uh, anyway, thank you for 
uh, enjoying this rambling book newbie, booktube, booktube newbie tag with me, with my um, background being not the best. I will clean this room one day. Please be careful. Please be safe. Please social distance. And please subscribe! <laughs>